Hello everybody and uh, welcome to my kind of nerding around here on LabVIEW. Uh, LabVIEW is a programming software I used at college this last semester mostly. Um, and for the last two days I've been making a injection molding machine on it and uh, it actually works pretty damn close. Uh, I made a pretty basic machine as you can see I don't have a lot of buttons or switches or anything but it is right down to the wire and it, it functions. <laughs> Uh, so it's a Sumitomo run by powered by DMAG, and we're actually going to run this. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to turn on my main breakers, and you can't run one of these without heat to melt the plastic, obviously. So we're going to turn on our heat two heater zones, and over here I'm going to set. Let's see. We'll do a zone one temperature of about six ten and zone 2 at about 595 ish come on there you go good boy okay uh, and while those are heating up you'll be able to see it here and I also have various graphs on our main screen I'll show you around while that's it's gonna take a while to heat up oh yeah but on the processing screen over here here's all the variables for setting up a process for different parts and so on. I have a cycle timer. You have all these indicators here on your mold positions, your screw positions, as your carriage forward, uh, your screw rotation recovery time. You can set all your speeds right here, your shot size, back pressures, fill times. Here's your fill V1 speeds, fill, uh, fill V2 speeds, so you get different segments. Here's your cushion, very important for your screw, so you're not bottoming it out. And here's your here's your transfer when you're transferring over from the fill pro part of the process up to your pack. And here's your set pack and hold times and your cooling time. More important as you get into the bigger bigger uh, area parts and everything. Uh, I got a graph going on here for injection pressures. And I've processed various alarms into this process, so uh, you know, if the pressures get too high or the temperatures start going out of whack, this machine will actually go into alarm and, and shut down. And there's a light up here for the alarm. Here's another light over here for the alarm that will come on red just like that. There's that one. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll kill the machine completely, and you have to reset it here and run everything back up again. Um, besides that, I'm making a robot for it. I'm not done making a robotic picker. That's what this is going to be over here. Now I'll have to add the whole assembly up on top there. But if we move over to the block diagram here, I can show you the actual programming that went into this and I like I said I've been spending the last two two and a half days working on this and it's all basically loops uh, you know it won't do anything unless your main power is on obviously that's main breaker is on it's showing it's on so it's gonna move on to this next section uh, here's a cycle time counter this will start counting as soon as the machine starts running and it will kick off and reset every time what do I got it set for? Every time the mold opens and closes, basically. Here's all your heater zone controls right here. And our alarms. Uh, you know, whatever you set it for, it's going to get up to that section and hold about 10 degrees plus or minus whatever you set that section for. Now, this program, what it checks is it runs starting here at your main breaker. If the power is on, it's going to move over to your heats, it's going to check your heats. It checks the heats every tenth of a second. And if everything's okay there, it will move on to this section, which is our alarms and flags section. If you have anything on here that is preventing the machine from running the right way, it will not run. Including, here's our section here for you know the switch on the main uh, processing uh, panel. It says off manual mode, semi-automatic, or fully automatic. And this all goes into the same thing. It will not run unless all of these agree, and there are no other flags that will stop the the process from running. If this is all go, and it checks that within a you know a tenth of a second, it, it goes through every single one of these in milliseconds. It will move into your mold closing procedure here, 
and then from there there's a time delay for safety. It checks to make sure the injection carriage is forward. If it's not, it'll go into an alarm. If it is, it's going to inject the plastic. And then we go into our whole second injection, which is holding and packing transfer. Our screw recovery position, which is after, um, you know, the, usually there's the, you got your hold and pack time, your screw recovery, and then your cooling time, which is, there's a time delay here, cooling time right here. And then up here all these local variables are being reset to zero. So all of what you see on this part of the monitor while it is running, it's giving you your recovery time, your actual pack time, your screw cushions, your transfer position. It's going to give you that as it happens and then it's going to reset it about five seconds after you get that information for the next time the process comes around. And then it goes on to your, your mold opening and your ejection, obviously, of the part. And I got this program basically set up for a semi-automatic semi mode. I can't run it fully automatic yet. I haven't spent enough time on it. Which means, basically, it's going to stop until we hit the run button again. So I'm going to set it for semi-automatic mode here. Uh, let's see here. Our heats are all up to temperature, you can see. I'm going to move our injection carriage forward into the forward position. So we're reading let's see, 611 on those forward heats, and we should have our 595 back there. We do have a cycle time limit here I can set for. This is about a 34 second cycle I have going on. And I just haven't set to 55. It will kick off and go into alarm if it exceeds 55. And I'm basically I'm going to run the machine while a couple times. I'm going to run it while looking at this screen. I'm going to run it while looking. Try to see if I can get the machine and this section so you can kind of see what's going on. I mean, this is just a picture I got off of Google Images, and I was able to modify it enough for use on here, so <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and run it. Um, so you're going to hit a run, so that's illuminated in green now. And now we can watch these sections as we run the machine here. There's the mold closing, you can see it over here too. And I'm going to have, oh, these are all LED controlled, I mean these are, they have LED lights in them, so whenever a certain process is happening you see screw inject just went on that should kick off and then it will go over the screw rotate any second there's our screw rotation this will be right at the end here there it's on see our cycle timer is 28 29 seconds I think it should be 34 seconds when this mold opens up there it comes and boom the injection pins are out you can grab the parts now if we go over to our main processing hub here, I don't know if a lot of you know I actually worked in injection molding for a number of years and I did a lot of the processing and I learned a lot in the time I was there about you know actually doing this and creating parts. So it's probably a second language for anybody watching this, nobody probably knows what the hell I'm doing, but let's run this. On this screen, you can see I got all these indicators here. Green light is on saying the carriage is forward. Here's our injection. Our injection PSI going all the way up here. It's about 86, so we should have a cushion of 14, which we do. We transfer it at 36. Here's our screw rotating back into position. There we go. Now it's cooling. Our cooling time, I can set these. I can lower these. I can... I have a pack time for 4 seconds and a cooling time for 10 seconds. So after the cooling time, that mold will open right back up, which you can see it's doing right now. And that's it. Pretty cool. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it took me two days to do this. It was a lot of trial and error, troubleshooting, as you could imagine. You know, you spend an hour and a half trying to get something working, and then you realize it's something stupid that you didn't have wired the right way in in your program. So... I'm pretty happy with it for being a beginner still. I mean, 
I did. I took robotics and programming at MCC. We're not talking like RIT or some big time school. And for me to be this good at it already, the future looks pretty promising. So I hope you enjoyed watching me nerding out over you know injection molding here. Uh, we can turn our machine off now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hope to take a lot more videos like this uh, once I get a little more familiar with LabVIEW and get a little more advanced with it. I mean, this is pretty advanced as it is, but not near where I want to be. And, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys later.